Good morning. My name is Kerry Pizage and I'm the Development, Marketing and Community Relations Manager here at Salesian College Sunbury. Welcome and thank you for joining our Father's Day event this morning. Wow, what a year we've had. Though we've had to meet virtually today, we hope this is an event you'll particularly enjoy and will set you up for a wonderful day ahead. Now, before we officially start, I'd like to thank all those that play the role of father, as this event is for you. I would also like to acknowledge how wonderful my own dad is, as he has shaped me into who I am today. Hi, Dad. Now, we have a big lineup, so I guess we best get started. Make sure you're comfortable and relaxed. If you're unable to be surrounded by those that you love, make sure you give them a call later today. So let us begin with the formal part of our event. We'll first hear from our college principal, Mr. Mark Brockes, and then our faith director, Stephen Connolly. This will be followed up with a range of musicians from our alumni and current students, as well as we'll hear from our very special guest, Wayne Swass. So enjoy the morning, and again, happy Father's Day to all those out there. Thank you. everyone and welcome to our virtual Father's Day for 2020. Father's Day for me always evokes a, uh, an old-fashioned feel. I, I remember the, the cards we used to give our father on Father's Day always had some sort of uh, old-fashioned feel to them like the image you see next to me, the, the fishing basket and the fishing rod because that's what dads did. Um, I look forward to Father's Day every year because it's a great way of celebrating what our fathers have given us. I had the opportunity recently of visiting my dad uh, in Marimula um, before lockdown was imposed uh, as he turned 94. Uh, it's a great opportunity of being able to celebrate his achievements over that time and to say thank you. And I hope today in our celebration of Father's Day we're able to do just that with our dads and all of those father figures in our life. I'd like to think that this morning as we gather um, and before we're entertained and we have some inspirational words from our guest speaker today, we might pause for a moment to reflect on the, those fathers and grandfathers who are currently doing it pretty tough through these COVID pandemic times. In particularly the elderly in nursing homes, um, it's hard for them at the moment, hard for us to see them and difficult and frightening at the same time to be exposed to such a, a terrible disease. So as we begin this morning, I'm going to ask our captains to lead us in prayer and ask that you keep and hold all these dear people in your hearts this morning. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Connolly, and I'm currently the Director of Faith and Mission here at Salesian College Sunbury. I often say to our students that it's nice when we can find time to just take a few moments collectively to gather in prayer. In the business of our days, these can often be hard to find. And we know as a college community, we can sometimes be challenged with the business of our days. But prayer will always be a central part of our faith community. And when opportunities come together as a faith community, like this one this morning, it's important that we place ourselves in prayer, even just for a few minutes. I've said on my college newsletter articles this year, we have found ourselves in a profoundly challenging year. We all share that narrative. But our individual stories, our family stories are different. Many of us have experienced loss, and pain and grief over the duration of this year. There have been times when it's been hard, very hard, to find those bright moments. We've missed out on celebrations, milestone family celebrations. And I think of the 13th birthday parties, the 18th birthday parties, the engagement parties within family life, the weddings, the baptisms, the anniversaries, and of course, perhaps the despair of not being able to have as many loved ones as we wanted at different family funerals. 
but we have had time to celebrate some things this year. And this morning we gather together as a faith community, as a college community, to celebrate our fathers. And so I invite you now to enter into a place of stillness, of contemplation, of reflection, a place where we can communicate even for a few moments within our hearts our deepest love and joy for the fathers in our college community and for all those fathers we know. So I ask you to close your eyes for just a few minutes to find that little place in your heart, to find that stillness. And as we draw upon the celebration of this weekend of Father's Day, let us offer up a prayer to our Heavenly Father for all those fathers we know, those fathers who are with us at present, those fathers who might be separated by borders and boundaries, those fathers who are geographically distant from us, and those fathers who have eternal rest with God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, our Father in heaven, let us praise those fathers who have striven to balance the demands of work, marriage, family life, and the raising of children with an honest awareness of both the joy and the sacrifice. Let us praise those fathers who were to be our role models for their children and role models for other men. Let us praise those fathers who continue each day to grow in their love and support of their families. Let us praise those fathers who use words and actions that nurture, that nurture gently rather than words and actions that wound. Let us praise those fathers who may have lost a child to death and continue to hold that child deep within their heart. Let us praise those men who have no children but cherish the next generation as if they were their own and provide a fatherly figure to them. Let us praise those men who by their very nature have fathered us in their role as a mentor, a coach, and a gentle guide. And let us praise those fathers who have died, but live on in our memory, and whose everlasting love continues to nurture us today. God our Father, we ask that you bless all the fathers, that they may find strength always and let their example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant we, their children, may honour them always with a spirit of profound respect and love. And we ask this in your name, our Heavenly Father. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I wish my sincerest blessing on all the fathers in our college community and all those fathers who may be distant again from us, but who we love and cherish. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam. Uh, I was a graduate of Slesian in 2017, and I'm thrilled to be back to sing a couple songs for Father's Day. Um, I'll be doing Blackbird by the Beatles and Make You Feel My Love by Bob Dylan. Um, 
So yeah, sending love to all the dads out there in this time. Um, trapped with your families, that's um, what more could you want? Uh, <laughs> no, happy Father's Day and um, I hope it's a good one. <clears throat> Singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arrive Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see All your life You were only waiting for this moment to be free Blackbird fly Blackbird fly Into the light of the dark black night Birds singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arrive Blackbirds singing in the dead of night Take these sunken eyes and learn to see All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arrive Blackbird fly Blackbird fly Into the light of the dark black night Hi, I'm Tiara and I'm going to be playing I Am Australian.
Hello everybody, my name is Wayne Stwost. I am a um, father of three kids who currently go to Salesian College and I have been invited by the school to participate in the virtual Father's Day event this year, um, <clears throat> which I'm only too happy to um, be involved in. I think it's important um, and it's certainly an important time um, with regards to what we're all currently living through. Um, as uh, students, teachers, parents, families in a broader school community. Um, I became a parent the first time uh, in 2003 with uh, our twin daughters uh, who are both in year 11 this year and then again in 2007 with the arrival of their younger brother who's in year 7 this year. Um, I also work in the mental health and emotional well-being space. The organisation behind me is an organisation I founded three and a half years ago, Pucker Up. And we work in the preventative space, helping to raise awareness, educate, and help people develop the skill set and tools which actually allow them to proactively manage and look after their well-being, as opposed to, unfortunately for a lot of people, waiting until they get sick and then they react or respond to challenging situations that people may be going through. Um, COVID is a really difficult and challenging experience, not just um, as a small business owner, but you know, as, as uh, a parent. Um, it's presenting unique and different challenges to all of us. Um, certainly as parents, um, as family units, as a school community, with um, all of the students currently learning remotely, which is bringing new stresses and new challenges from a school perspective to make sure that we have an ability of continuing the education for all of the kids in all of the year levels. Um, and I think one of the things that I've reflected on a lot, and, and I reflect on these things consistently, um, COVID is a unique challenge that no one has lived through before. And I think, some of the observations that I identified and acknowledged during this time is the value and importance of communication. And certainly as a parent, I think it's really important that we create opportunities and invite um, our, our kids into discussions regularly. Um, and it's not just discussions about what's happening at school, how they're going with particular subjects, if they've got SACs or if they've got projects, I think they're important conversations to have. Um, but I also uh, think that through challenging and stressful periods like we're navigating our way through at the moment, um, other important conversations that I think are really important and valuable to have with our kids are conversations around feelings and emotion. Um, I'm, um, I'm emotionally connected and expressive as a person. That's who I am and I've done a lot of work in that. There was a time where I wasn't you know, for a long time. Um, but I think what COVID has reinforced in my own mind is the, is the value and importance and the need <clears throat> as parents, as partners, but also as um, influential people in our children's lives to have conversations proactively as often and as frequently as we need around how are our children feeling? How, what are they thinking? Um, what type of emotions are they, uh, are they experiencing? <clears throat> because one of the things that I've learned is that when we give ourselves permission to experience all of our emotions, happiness, sadness, frustration, fear, insecurity, joy, love, connection, um, <clears throat> allowing ourselves to experience all of those emotions, to think, feel, and then communicate with the people that we trust, that we love is really, really important, it's valuable, and it helps us move through those challenging situations. So a lot of conversations that, that I tend to have are not just school related, it's about feelings, it's about emotions, it's about what they're experiencing, and just creating those environments for our kids to be able to talk is really important and really valuable. One of the, one of the challenges that I personally fall into sometimes is as a parent and as a person, I like to problem solve and I like to fix things. And what I've learned, I'm far from being a perfect parent, is that 
Sometimes our kids don't want us to fix them. Sometimes our kids just want us to listen. So I think when we're having those conversations, having an ability to park in the solution focus or problem solving strategies or trying to resolve the issues on behalf or for our kids, um, it, it's, it's important to be mindful of creating an environment and an opportunity just for our kids to be able to talk. And we may not have any rallies, we may not have the solutions or the fixes to solve the problems, but what we all do have is the capability of just listening to our kids. Um, <clears throat> and we don't have to necessarily try to fix it. Sometimes what I'm learning, and I learn all the time, um, is that sometimes our kids just want to be heard. Um, and that's, that's something that I'm trying to prioritise uh, with our own children. Um, <clears throat> People, uh, I'm doing a lot of webinars at the moment and have done for the last four months, uh, working remotely. And um, <clears throat> I have been on a 26 year journey myself with mental health, uh, my own mental health and wellbeing. I lived with mental health conditions through the majority of my football career. Um, and for the past 15 years, I've developed a toolbox which I've been using consistently. Um, but that toolbox has become absolutely critical in my ability to navigate my way through the current situation as a small business owner, as a father, as a family member, as a friend. Um, and it's those tools that I've developed over the last 15 years which I use every day. Um, and that's something that I continue to invest in and, and um, ensure that I'm doing everything I possibly can to prioritise and look after my own mental health and emotional well-being and what I've learned is that my mental health and well-being and in actual fact my health just like everybody else is ultimately my responsibility so it's up to me to take ownership of my health both physically and emotionally and, and make decisions and do things which I know are positive and productive and actually help me look after my mental health and emotional well-being and in my toolbox there's a range of different skills that I've developed over a long period of time um, number one and this has been lifted up the order because of COVID but I actually give myself permission and allow myself to experience all of the emotions that I have available to me. Joy, happiness, fear, insecurity, uncertainty, um, love, connection, compassion, empathy, resilience, all of those emotions, and traits and tools are things that I give myself permission to experience. And there have been many days during COVID where I felt sad, I felt overwhelmed, um, and uh, at times um, very anxious. I don't deny those emotions. I actually acknowledge them. I may not know the reason on that day why I'm experiencing those emotions, but I give myself permission to think and to feel and then communicate what it is that I'm experiencing. I don't try to deny them. I don't try to fix them. I just acknowledge them. So giving ourselves an ability through a stressful time, like now, to think, feel, and then communicate all of our emotions is really important. It helps us move through the challenging situation. When we deny or ignore that the stress that we experience through that, 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 that day or period can increase significantly. And the issue and the risk that we run with that is that stress is the fuel that lights the fire to mental health conditions. And everybody's dealing with stress at the moment. So when we give ourselves permission to acknowledge and experience the, all of the emotions thoughts and feelings that we may be experiencing on any particular day or through a, a period in time, we're actually giving ourselves the ability to connect emotionally um, <clears throat> with regards to what it is that we are thinking, feeling and experiencing. And that's a really important therapeutical strategy which I apply every day. Number two, sleep is the most important thing that I give myself, so I prioritise it. If I'm tired, I go to bed early. It sounds really simplistic but I need to prioritise my sleep. So I rest physically and emotionally and then that gives me the energy in order to get up and face the coming day and have enough energy to work my way through that day if it's a good day, if it's not a good day, if it's anything else in between. Diet is really important. Again, this sounds simplistic, but this is my recipe for me looking after my mental health. And diet is made up of three really important parts. Number one, what we eat. That makes sense. If we eat poorly, we'll feel poor. If we eat better, we feel better. Secondly, what do I drink? So what are the types of fluids that I'm drinking? If I eat and drink well, I'll feel better. If I eat and drink poorly, I'll feel worse. And importantly, our gut health is our second brain. Our gut bacteria talks to our brain and vice versa. Our gut bacteria, if it's healthy, influences the way we feel and we think. 
So if we start to make different choices which are healthier for our, our, our food and our drink, then over a period of time, we will think and feel more positive about ourselves um, and feel better within ourselves. And the third important thing, which I think is really important, especially for our children, and this is something that I've become very conscious of, is it's not only the food and the drink that we consume in our diet, it's what are we consuming with regards to what we watch, read, and listen. And I'm talking about the media. I don't watch the news cycle anymore because it's skewed to negativity. I closed down my Twitter account earlier this year with 26,000 followers. Why? Because it's toxic and negative. I don't need that in my life. So I would consciously make decisions about the food and the drink that I eat, but also the content that I consume. I think one of the challenges is for our children is what's the type of content that they are consuming. And unfortunately for a lot of kids, they're living in a world where they're being compared to rightly or wrongly against other people, against friends, influencers, role models, whoever it might be. And uh, um, it, I think it's really challenging. So from a parent's perspective, I'd be encouraging people to have conversations around what their children are consuming. And if you think it's negative, have a discussion about that. And encourage uh, your child to think about what it is they choose to follow, what it is they choose to read, listen to, or watch. Um, my support networks are really important. Immediate family. Um, I have a doctor who's been my doctor for 34 years, who's effectively a second father. Um, my chairman of Pucker Up, my CEO of Pucker Up my closest friends um, and family are uh, my support network. Um, they're people that I rely on. Um, I certainly rely on and tap into those people when I'm going through a difficult period. But I, as I said before, am responsible for my health and my well-being. So it's on me to take ownership for the decisions that I make. But when I feel like I'm being challenged or a little overwhelmed or anxious, um, and I know I'm doing the right thing to manage and look after my mental health, but I still feel anxious or overwhelmed, I constantly talk to the people that I trust because I know that they will listen, they will support me, and they will encourage me when I might be going through a challenging period. And I do that consistently. So I would encourage other people to think about who's in your support network, who do you trust? Don't just talk to people when things are going well. Continue to do that. When things are challenging, you're feeling overwhelmed, agitated, you're not sure, you're worried, you're scared, you might be fearful, that's the perfect time to tap into those people that you trust and just talk to them about what you're thinking and what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. Um, one of the key messages that I have continued to champion for well over 15 years is that 99.9% <clears throat> .9 of the population invest in the physical health because we understand the value and the importance. We invest into our physical health because we don't want to get sick, we don't want to break down, and we don't want to die any sooner than we have to. So we understand that our physical health is really important. But sadly, less than 20, 25% of the audiences that I've engaged with in that time invest into their mental health. When we think about health, I want people to think about physical plus mental. If we don't want to break down, we don't want to get sick, and we don't want to die any sooner than we have to, and we want to live a long and healthy life, then it is, a, that it is, is it a combination of physical plus mental health. Physical plus mental health. It's physical health plus emotional health that keeps us healthy, that prevents us from getting sick, prevents us from breaking down, and prevents us from dying any sooner than we have to. Now, that's not a guarantee, but one thing I have absolutely come to learn and appreciate is health is the sum of physical plus mental. If it's important to prioritise and invest into your physical health, then it is perfectly, it makes perfect sense to apply and invest in a similar way to your mental health and emotional well-being. I do not believe anybody needs to become unwell with a mental health condition before we start to think about what we do for our mental health. Prioritise it now, experiment and try with all the different things that we have available to us in order to invest into your emotional well-being. Why is that important? Because anyone that sees this video, whether you're a student at Salesian or a parent or a teacher or a principal, anyone within the community, Every single person has well-being. But don't start thinking about your well-being when your well-being is being negatively impacted because of the signs or symptoms of a mental health condition or, unfortunately, when you're living with a mental health condition. People that are stressed but don't have a sign or a symptom of a mental health condition, that's still well-being. Equally, people that are healthy and well, healthy and well both physically and mentally still have well-being. So what can we do today, tomorrow, and in the future 
to give ourselves the best opportunity of being healthy physically and mentally for as often and as long as possible. And in those times where we're stressed, what can we do in those moments that allow us to move back to a position of being healthy and well physically and mentally? And for those people who may be living with a mental health condition today, whether that be a student, a parent, or a teacher, and for those people who are supporting a loved one who are going through these conditions, my experience has taught me you can overcome these challenges and become healthy and happy and achieve all of your dreams that you want to do, because I have. I lived with three concurrent mental health conditions during two for the final two thirds of my football career. I was not healthy, I was really unwell, and I didn't think my life would change. My life has changed fundamentally because I've taken ownership of my mental health and I've done a tremendous amount of work, learning the skills, developing the tools which allow me to proactively look after my I have worked in this space for a very long time and the way that we continue through Pucker Up to raise awareness, create safe environments that invite people into these discussions are through webinars, are through presentations. Prior to COVID, I think last year I did 82 face-to-face um, -face presentations across the 12-month period all over the country. Um, through COVID, I, I, I've lost count as to how many webinars uh, I have done. Um, I think I've got four or five this week. I was dubious about whether technology would allow me to engage with audiences on topics like this, but it, it's done absolutely that and, and so much more. People want to be in these conversations. People want to learn more. People want to have an understanding of what wellbeing and mental health looks like. And importantly, people want to develop the tools and strategies that allow them to take control of their mental health. Um, we are very active through Pucker Up on social media. I'm incredibly active with regards to my Instagram uh, account at a personal level. Um, we're about to launch the third series of the Puck, Pucker Up podcast. Um, so we will continue on a daily basis to raise awareness, to advocate about the importance of mental health and emotional wellbeing. Um, and that's something that I'm incredibly passionate about. And the final thing that I would like to finish by sharing is um, Salesian obviously is a, is a co-ed school with an um, amazing group of young girls and young boys. And there are a lot of children who are hurting. It's not a male thing, it's not a female thing. Um, a lot of boys and a lot of girls, maybe a lot of mums and a lot of dads at the moment are going through some really challenging and stressful times. And what I'd like to finish uh, by saying is I really want to encourage all of the students and especially the parents we need to create safe spaces for ourselves and our kids to be able to talk openly and honestly about when they're in pain and when they're hurt. One of the things that I've consistently seen over a very long period of time is that there's so much gender conditioning applied to our children and to ourselves. And unless we create new environments uh, and we change the messaging, then as parents, what we may do is inadvertently condition our children in the same way that we've been conditioned. And what I mean by that is, we don't tell our children to stop it, that's not how you behave, that's not how you expect to behave, that's not what we do when our kids laugh and they have fun and they giggle, nor should we. But I see it consistently when our children are in pain and hurting and they start to cry, that messages such as, that's not how you behave, cut it out, toughen up, harden up, get on with it, that's not how you're expected to behave. I hear those messages, I've seen those messages, I lived with those messages through my entire playing career. If those messages are part of your vocabulary, stop repeating it because it's conditioning our children to disconnect emotionally. We need to create safe spaces that empower our children to be emotionally connected and expressive. If they are doing nothing wrong when they laugh, they are doing nothing wrong when they cry. All they are doing is being a human being. So our choice as parents is simple. If we repeat the same messages, we will condition our children in the same way we've been conditioned. Yet if we consciously choose to think about what we're saying to our kids, we can empower our children to stay emotionally connected and expressive as they grow up into adults. And I believe the greatest gift 
that we can give our children are emotionally expressive and connected parents. Because what that shows our kids is it's normal behaviour for an adult woman or an adult man to be emotional and display all of their emotions, including vulnerability and the ability to cry. This is normal behaviour for, for human beings. And if we are prepared to display that and show that with our children, then we're giving our children permission to think, believe and behave in the same way as they grow. And our kids at some point in their lifetime will become adults, potentially get married, potentially have children. And I believe a world where all human beings are emotionally connected and expressive is a world that is within our reach, but it's up to us to create new environments and new conversations for us as parents and individuals, and importantly our kids, to be a part of to be involved in. Um, to the school community, to Mr Brockus, to the teachers and to the kids, I know that 2020 has been very challenging for uh, the school community, uh, but as a parent of children attending the school, um, I really want to acknowledge and thank the collective efforts of everybody um, for the effort and the investment that you continue to make into the student body and to all of the kids. Um, 2020 has been been challenging, it's been stressful, but I am confident that through this experience that you will learn a lot more about yourself and you will develop a level of resilience that you thought was not possible. I'm incredibly proud of every student for the effort that you're putting in and I wish everybody um, the very best for the remainder of the year and in finishing. I would like to wish all of the amazing dads out there a very happy Father's Day. You play a really important role along with uh, the mums of all the wonderful kids. Um, but on this coming Sunday, it's your day. Enjoy it, take care, and look after yourself. Thank you very much.
go to the ends of the earth for you to make you feel my love to make you feel my love hey everyone happy father's day my name is Isaac McKenzie uh, I graduated from Salesian College last year, and today I'll be playing uh, three songs for you. This first one's one of my dad's favorites. It's, um, you know, whenever I'm playing guitar, he always asks me to play this song. And as much as it gets annoying, I, I don't blame him. It's pretty fun to play, too. So it's called Like Real People Do by Hosea. I hope you enjoy it. scary about the nights, the bugs and the dirt. Why were you leaking? What did you bury before those ants put me from the earth? I will not ask you where you came from. I will not ask you, neither should you. Honey, just put your sweet lips on my lips We should just kiss like real people do I know that look dear eyes always seeking Was there in someone dark long ago? So I will not ask you why you are weeping In some sad way I already know I should not ask you where you came from I will not ask you, neither should you Honey, just put your sweet lips on my lips We should just kiss like real people do Just put your sweet lips on my lips We should just kiss like real people do Thank you. This, um, this next song I'll be playing is... Um, one of my favorites. Um, as much as it's a really sad song, um, and the reason the person wrote it was quite sad, it showed a very beautiful side to that person that I don't think without music we would have been able to see. Um, a side of fatherhood. Um, it's by Eric Clapton. It's called Tears in Heaven. I hope you enjoy it. I'm 
us be strong and carry on for I know I don't belong here in heaven would you hold my If I saw you in heaven Would you understand If I saw you in heaven mm -hmm, Through night and day I'll find my way For I know I just can't stay here in heaven Time can bring you down It can bend your knees It can break your heart Leave you begging, please Begging, please oh. Thank you.
I'll kill my brown Oh, kill my brown Watch you go Watch you go Watch you go Watch you go Watch you go